Hey guys, so yesterday we ground down all these little brass pins and now we're just going to put these back into the base and see if the top fits on. So they are all in, moment of truth. Nice. So now that this fits correctly, let's finish building it up. So we have these bronze spacers that go on top of here. And now the Damascus steel posts. Now these have been made by a blacksmith in the UK called Owen Bush. If you're not familiar with his work, he's one of the best swordsmiths that I've ever seen and a bit of a Damascus wizard. So you can see the two different types of steel. They've been folded together, forged down, and then etched to produce this texture. And I think they look amazing. And then we have these little bronze finials on the top. So we screw a stud into each one. And then they just sit on the top of here. So as I said before, there's a lot of individual texturing and finishing work to do on each of these components. So now that we know everything fits, I'm just gonna disassemble it all and uh, work through everything one at a time. So the first thing we're gonna look at is these feet and they're not functioning exactly as they should. This little stepped section here should be going all the way into the base so that they can move in and out by that three millimeter dimension so that you can balance the base without seeing any of the screw threads. But they're not going in far enough. And I'm gonna fix that in two different ways. Firstly, I have this M10 tap, so I'm just going to bottom this out in the hole and just make sure all the thread is as clean as it can be at the bottom. And then if that doesn't work entirely, I will just reduce the length of this threaded section here because we've got about five mil more than we really need here. And there's the bottom. And let's see if that's helped. Nope, not really. So let's see if that worked. Yes. So I'll just replicate that on these two and then they'll all be sitting flat. Nice. So as these feet are designed to be gripped and rotated to balance the base, uh, we want some kind of texture on the outside, so we're going to do a hammered finish. I have this little tool that I made a few years ago, it's just an old bolt with the end rounded over, and I'm just going to clamp this in a vise and then use a hammer and texture the outside. So that is all done, and we just need to do that two more times. So I'm really happy with the hammering, but the edge has gone a bit wobbly just from the hammer marks pushing into the material on this face. So I'm going to smooth down this face and round over the corners very slightly just to neaten up that edge. So all the brass and bronze pieces on this project, the customer wants them to look old. So there's a few different ways to do that, but I'm going to try just using heat. And I've done this before and it just accelerates the oxidation on the brass and it should end up quite an even brown colour. And you need to get it pretty hot. So I'm going to do this till it's glowing. And that's the result. I think that looks really good compared to how it was before. We've got a bit of a splodge on this side from the direct flame, but that doesn't really matter because there'll be a pad on this face. 
and they're all looking nice and old. But just to give them a bit more of a realistic antique finish, I've got some 5000 grit sandpaper here and I'm just going to buff off the corners. So on the right is before buffing and then on the left is with that 5000 grit sandpaper. And I just find it makes it look slightly more natural, like it's it's become antique because it's been used and uh, you know it's been touched for years and that's why there's some shiny high points and you can see a bit of the brass through which I like. And there they are all done. And we'll put these in the done pile. And that is it for today guys. Hope you are liking these videos, hope you're enjoying the progress and uh, see you next time which is hopefully tomorrow.